Welcome back to Naval Action and episode 26 of A Letter to the King. A Letter to the King is my attempt to show the PvP, the port battles, the biffo that's going on on PvP Euro 1. Let's have a look at where we were at the beginning of the week. And as I mentioned, this is episode 26, which I'm no mathematician, but I think it means that's six months of continuous biffo. So hurrah for everybody. Um, where were we at the start of the week? Um, the Spanish were almost pushed out of the north around uh, the Gulf here. Uh, the French had snuck themselves into the Caymans. Um, the Brits were holding Jamaica despite all sorts of threats. The US and Spanish were having a little bit of a war around the north here of Cuba, quite limited in activity. Um, the Swedes and the pirates were knocking seven bells out of each other. But perhaps the main story was the Spanish spreading uh, across the north of South America, uh, spreading like a rash and eating up um, Dutch holdings on the uh, west side of what had historically been a stronghold for the Dutch. And at the same time, the Dutch were getting hit by three nations um, on their east flank with the French, the Danes and the Swedes pushing into them. And the Dutch were really down to a dozen ports and the trouble was very much at the mill. So what happened this week? Well, the alliances pretty much have stayed um, true. No big change there. The odd drop in, drop out just because of the silliness with the nine day window and the six day voting and so on and so forth. Um, and our pirate friends running around causing merry hell. So... The coordinated response by the Dutch is probably the main story of the week. In a series of to and fro battles, um, they've managed to drive the French, the Danes and the Swedes back, retaking a number of ports on their east flank. Uh, just towards the end of the week, the Danes, Coroco, Coco, or whatever it's called down here, managed to retake Coco. But the... Um, Dutch are beginning to re-establish themselves um, and get their shit together, as it were. Um, the British, with the Dutch, managed to push the Spanish out of all the ports across the uh, first as the leading edge of South America proper, um, outside of Panama into Nicaragua, um, leaving just one port, Barraquilla, and we'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, meanwhile, in the north, the Spanish lost uh Cisal or Salam Salam um, but towards the end of the week they managed to snag up uh, Tantum Cozumel, um, Alacans and La Bameja um, with uh, shallow, war battle, uh, shallow water battles. Uh, I had a little go at defending this one and got thoroughly outsailed um, by my Spanish opponent. We both sunk in the end but it was one of those battles where I looked at his ship and he was down to 10% health on both sides. Um, where I was completely knackered on one side. That's when you know you've been outsailed, when all your health is fine on one side and your other side is completely gone after a repair. Basically, he was choosing the engagement. I was sniping at both sides, um, uh, although it was very satisfying to see about 30 minutes later he sank. I quite like the shallow uh, port water battles, but um, I generally run around in the bigger ships, and I must admit... Um, I'm a bit rusty at the old shallows, uh, but good battles and um, a hardcore bunch of um, Spanish chaps fighting across all this area. And uh, this is the only port left on the Aussie timer, Badger, or as the Spanish prefer to call it, Badger. Um, and we've had a few goes for Badger, um, but it's, it's, it's not ended well. We managed to get the flag down for the first time in a few days this week. Um, but the Spanish puppies live here, and with the coordinated response predominantly out of Corrientes, um, and the Spanish puppies floating in, uh, eventually the Brits were repelled and sent packing. Equally, every morning, um, or early evening, I guess, or every day, let's forget about time zones, eh? 
Um, Muguerez and Contoy have uh, been fantastically defended by the Spanish. You could walk across the British shipwrecks um, from Tombedo to Muguerez um, as, as the Spanish are clearly fleeted up around here and, and managed to defend. And one of the problems you get when you're um, attacking a port is there's this very annoying thing that if you, if you sink a ship um, as you come in to attack it, of course the, 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 the dead baddy respawns in the very port you're trying to take. Um, so that's very annoying because they effectively get two bites at you. And any ships that they sink, of course, they respawn miles away. Um, which, which gives the defender a bit of a double dip at defending. And then, of course, defending in the port battle itself is um, uh, always an advantage to the defenders. And I have to say, the Spanish have had a lot of practice at defending ports, and they're getting quite good at it. Uh, and the point in case here is uh, Barraquilla, where I, I think for four or five days consecutively now, um, the Spanish have put up a resolute defence around this port. Um, British have sent in first-rate screening fleets to be met by second- and third-rate Spanish. Uh, quite often that results in a sort of uh, a wooden victory, as it were, uh, for the Brits. Um, and it does allow the Dutch to get the flag down. But it's a delaying action that's worked um, every time so far for the Spanish and they've managed to get full fleets in to defend. Um, it got to within two ships over the weekend, um, probably our third or fourth go. Um, it got to within two ships of that port falling, uh, but once again the Spanish held out. So um, probably some of the best port battle um, action going on around that neck of the woods. Um, plenty of other good port battles going on around here. Pretty much this entire from uh, this entire side of the map, uh, this entire east side of the map um, is on a single timer. It's on a, a, a two or maybe perhaps a four hour period of time. Um, so there's a great build up to it. Some of the early ports go off. It's a sort of a signal, it's the red dawn. Um, and then the battles proper commence all along here. All this is on a single timer. Um, so Spain clinging on as they are here. Um, the Brits are throwing... I saw battles here with 30, 40, 50 ships involved um, from the Allies against equal numbers from the opposition. Um, some distraction flags being pulled over in Cuba to try and split the Spanish force. Um, to some extent, the Spanish have surrendered those ports rather than surrender this outpost down here. Um, and this is where the entertainment is. Earlier in the week, however, there was perhaps uh, one of the most spectacular battles where, uh, again, the Dutch under pressure decided to change it up a little bit. And they hit a first-rate fleet and they hit it with a lot of fire ships. And I'll let you... Uh, this is a video made by MPA. He was one of the guys in this battle on the Dutch side. Um, I'll put a link to this or you can search up MPA. Um, and this is one of the funniest um, battles I've ever seen. Um, them, I don't know how many fire ships they took in, four or five maybe, um, but they caught the first rate fleet coming at them into the wind. Um, and, and then you just got this chain reaction and, and look, we've turned all these lovely first rates into barges or indeed uh, submersive uh, aquamarine parks. But there were six or seven ships ablaze at one point and this sort of chain reaction of blowing up and, 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 and sails going down and you know ships wandering off with a, a single stack. And look at this poor little fella over here. All he's got there is his foresail. So um, I, I strongly recommend watching this. I was actually halfway through uh, doing some, uh, some naval action and moving a whole bunch of ships around. I ended up shutting down the game to watch this. It's absolutely hilarious. Um, I have seen battleships ablaze off the port of Maracaibo. Good stuff, lads. Um, the Brits managed to push the French out of uh, Little Cayman um, and also uh, snag up uh, Trinidad, I can't remember, snag up uh, one of the ports, two of the ports um, on the southern coast of Cuba. Um, so uh, the French now are clinging on to Portillo, and I think that's Manzanilla, um, outside of their sort of um, ancestral home, as it were. 
Um, there's still quite a lot of, uh, well, not so much over here. There's the odd engagement over here, but the Americans, uh, to be honest, they're, they're, they're pretty quiet. Um, not much going on. They, they had a big campaign maybe a month ago um, where they came rushing through all these islands, uh, really gave the pirates a bit of a shellacking. But to be honest, the last few weeks, the Americans seem to have um, gone into quiet mode. They had a couple of runs at a couple of Spanish ports, but that was about it. Um, the Swedes and the Pirates, they seem to get inv involved with each other pretty much every day. Uh, I think the Swedes probably made a port out of it this week. They, they, they lost a couple of ports off the mainland here, but picked up this little quadrangle of islands towards the end of the week. Um, and so the Swedes have probably made a bit of a profit out of that port-wise. And, of course, um, Jamaica is just... I have never seen so much ganking in my chuff. Um, it's this decent sized fleets coming out um, not just like little scrappy fifth rates I quite like the fifth rate battles or the sixth rate battles but um, you know some second and third rate fleets um, 10 12 ships in some cases and um, it, 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 it pretty much bodes very poorly for the poor traders and, and, and solo Muppets who kind of get caught sailing around on their Jack Todd doing their own thing and then these big fleets arrive. Um, there's always a bit of tension between the so-called clans and the pubbies because the clans are out on far-flung shores um, while riot is occurring at the homeland. And I mean, that happens to everybody. I know um, the Spanish get hassled. I know the French get hassled. I know that because I participate in it. I know the pirates sail around giving people a bit of a shellacking left, right and centre. Um, but really, the... Um, the puppies of, of Jamaica have taken a, a fair whack in this week. Um, and, and, and quite often what you'll find is you'll find that the fleets coming in are coordinated. They're all on team speak. Um, quite often they're a clan or a clan with a couple of hangers on. Um, and when they engage, they quite often engage. There was a pirate fleet. It was like, I don't know, five balloners, six balloners, maybe that style of thing with half a dozen bell pools and they got outnumbered um, towards the end of that battle. It was probably 6,000 BR versus 4,000 BR. There was a first rate in there. There was four or five second rates, a bunch of fourths, and, and then Lucy's. Um, but the pirates spanked them, really. I mean, I think the pirates lost all their bell, bell pools and maybe maybe one second rate. But pretty much every British ship that, that didn't escape got captured or sank. Um, and that's just basically the difference between a coordinated fleet and an uncoordinated fleet. If you can bring three ships to bear on one, that one will sink. Um, quite often it's, um, it's, it's wolves. What was the old saying? I'd rather a thousand sheep be led by a lion than a thousand lions be led by a sheep. Well, it's that sort of thing when it's puppies versus organized fleets. Um, I noticed that a couple of guys have started sort of defense clans, so they've got a loose alliance of puppies. I don't know if they're all technically in a clan, um, but as soon as the flare goes out, they join up together, and, and that's probably the best way of dealing with these gang fleets is as soon as some poor bastard gets roped in and eaten up by a marauding horde of Danes or Spanish or pirates or Swedes or French or whatever... Um, you need to coordinate your response, otherwise you'll just become victims. Um, and of course that's true for any national waters. Um, I know we snag up quite a few Spanish between the free ports uh, or missioning just off the north here. And if they don't, if, if the Spanish don't get together and send a, um, an equal or bigger size fleet out, it's free ships, free ship Thursday. We had free ship Thursday last week where I think we picked off four or five second rates and third rates and Connies and Ingers and all sorts of lovelies um, because there was no coordination and um, you can just pick up ships left, right and centre. And so that's the ganking. Um, of course, the interesting thing is why are people bothering with all this PvP? We've got the new maps coming out and, and, and the reason they're bothering, I think, is because it's, it's great fun. Um, now's a good time if you've not had a crack at the PvP to set yourself up with a port, um, uh, a free port for anybody in, in, in the free ports um, along the coast of Nicaragua uh, will guarantee you some PvP. Um, 
the US, uh, pirates and Swedes, anywhere um, around this neck of the woods will guarantee you some PvP. Get stuck in it, it's only pixels, give it a go, have a laugh. Um, there is no training academy for PvP. Uh, death, death is the teacher. Um, you'll, you'll do rubbish on your first four or five engagements, you won't follow instructions properly, you won't know when to withdraw, you won't know when to use your repair kits. Um, you always get schooled every now and again, like I said, I got schooled up here um, by a, a guy in the same ship as me and um, he just focused his fire on, on one side better than I did, you know, and you learn your lessons um, or you don't and you keep dying the same way. Um, so this is the new map, this will come in, they've not given us a date, but they said 15 to 20 days, it's, my guess is it's going to be the 29th of the month, uh, they like the Thursdays, and as you can see, bloody Spain. Bloody hell, what's going on? This is the Banana Republic, look at it. Um, the orange lines indicate where regions are. Regions is your goal to capture a region. Uh, we don't really know why. I'm assuming at some point you'll get some sort of benefit. There is talk about rejigging the trading. So um, I've heard things about, you know, Live Oak might become the domain of uh, the North Americas, for example. Um... If you hold a region, I don't know, perhaps you'll get some benefits from it. Um, certainly give you that sort of ability to trade and craft ships more satisfactorily, I would imagine. Um, but uh, the free ports, a whole bunch of free ports are moving. Uh, new free ports are being born. Um, the, if, if you've got ships in the free ports or assets in the free ports, they will be moved to their replacement free port. Um, however, if you've got ships in what will become foreign holding, you won't be able to get them out unless you're prepared to sail in there with a smuggler and put them in your fleet. And if you put them in your fleet, you've got to rip all your mods off, which is very disturbing. I had that happen to me at Pampatar. I, I had two or three nice ships in Pampatar and that got snaffled up. I had to sail in there two or three times with a smuggler to get them all out, put them in a fleet and either teleport back, your fleet will come back with you or sail away, which is very risky because um, you tend to have a, two prestige ships in a fleet led by a cheap ship, a, a trader's links or something. Um, so I encourage you to go on the forums. I'm not going to put a link in. Get on the forums. Uh, go into the developer announcements thread and um, read up on the new port battle mechanics, on the new um, setup. Um, if you don't go into the forums and your ship gets locked away, um, they do everything they can to let you know about this, so um, you know, buyer beware to some extent. Uh, very much looking forward to this. Um, given that so much of the map is on the same time zone and I had to get up at 5 a.m. to participate in some of the port battles this week, otherwise I would have had no significant uh, port battles, just, just my little evening flirtations with half a dozen Spanish. Um, th then um, I think with the new system where you can agitate a port and set it up for a port battle on your timer um, that should allow, that should get rid of the time zone problem um, or change it perhaps, we'll see, we're testing eh, we'll see how it goes uh, so that's the new map, uh, there's a version in the forums that one of the one of the players, bless their cotton socks, has put a legend on to explain what it all means um, I think this is going to be, in the long run, this area here is going to be a bit of a newbie zone um, where there'll be different rules of engagement uh, just around here. These grey areas is going to be like a newbie zone. Uh, you can only do one-on-one -on -one battles and only certain BR maximums and so on and so forth. Um, so, in the remaining week or two, where will we see the Biff and the Bash? Uh, there'll be the normal shenanigans around this neck of the woods. Um, there'll be pressure on the coast here. Oh, this is last week's map. Bad me. There'll be pressure along the coast here. Uh, the Swedes and the Pirates, I can't see there um, fighting or baiting. Uh, Baron Quilla is going to be the probably the touchstone for most of the big the big 40-50 ship. You know, 20 ship screeners and 25 in port type actions. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised towards the end when we know that it's all over Red Rover. I wouldn't be surprised to see crazy bonker attacks on Jamaica just because why not? Um, just people showing their muscles before we go. Um, so we come to the tally board. Uh, I'm not sure how this will work in the future with regions. But anyway, the, uh, the Brits gained, gained a few ports pretty much from pushing the Spanish out around Nicaragua. Uh, the Americans, they were having a sleep. French lost a few ports as the Dutch managed to riposte and push to the east. 
Um, the Danes pretty much broke even, snagging a port up at the end to stop that going negative. Swedes gained a port, I think that was off the Pirates. Um, the Spanish took a bit of a beating, they lost eight ports, uh, which is why we see the Dutch rise, they gain ports, and we see here the Pirates, they lost that port to the Swede. So there you go, um, that's it for this week's naval action. Give us a like, give us a subscribe, I'll see you on the oceans, and I will catch you.